Battery electric vehicles have been seeing huge sales growth over the last couple of years, but there is another alternative to batteries and that's hydrogen. I have behind me the Toyota Mirai, which was the first mass produced fuel cell electric vehicle on the market. And people like the idea of hydrogen because you can refuel in a similar fashion to petrol cars. And if you don't like change, that really is appealing to you. It's also exactly the same zero emissions as for the vehicle at least as battery vehicles. However, is it any good? Could you actually use a fuel cell electric vehicle as an alternative to a regular car? Let's find out. This is a rather strange looking car, like a Prius's bigger brother, which in many ways is exactly what it is. It's very angular and wedge shaped with a drag coefficient of 0.29, which is good, but not outstanding. All the components of the powertrain are distributed across the vehicle. So under the bonnet here, although it says fuel cell on it, this is not where the fuel cell stack actually is. You have an air intake for bringing oxygen into it and the electric motor is underneath there because this is a front wheel drive car, although the next generation Mirai will be rear wheel drive. So the fuel cell itself is actually underneath the driver's and passenger's seats. So this is the bit of the engine that takes the hydrogen and the oxygen, brings them together and uses a chemical process to create electricity. One of the hydrogen tanks is under here, under the passenger seat, and towards the front of the boot is another hydrogen cylinder plus a battery that's a 1.6 kilowatt hours and unusually it's a nickel metal hydride battery not lithium ion because that's actually what Toyota uses in its hybrid drive chains for cars like the Prius. Toyota has distributed these elements across the full length of the car to balance the weight out. It's worth noting that those hydrogen cylinders are at 700 atmospheres so that's uh, 700 times the pressure of air at 111 meters which sounds a bit scary and a lot of people are worried about these things exploding but actually they're very very heavily armored kevlar based tanks however this car weighs in at a fairly hefty 1850 kilograms which is about the same as a tesla model 3. so basically this car takes oxygen that it draws in from the front hydrogen from its tanks mixes them together to make electricity and that's what drives the car the end result is just water, which comes out at the bottom of the car here. So here we go. This is the water. I'm not planning to taste this though, because you don't know what else has been under the bottom of this car. However, apart from its novel drivetrain, this is a pretty standard car. Toyota doesn't publish any kind of details about options or trim upgrades because that's not what this car is about. It's available from 61,500 including the OLEV grant. It's actually more expensive than a Tesla Model 3 Performance. This Mirai version has been around since 2015 so it's not particularly new either. But Toyota still packed in as much tech as it could so most of the features you'd expect in a 2020 car are still there. Something we've noticed about the fuel cell cars we've driven, the Hyundai Nexo being the other one, is that the interior is verging on limousine level. The front seats are sumptuous and you get plenty of space. You get dual cup holders underneath this flap and in this cubby is a Qi charger and also USB port and audio input for a mobile phone. The rear seat passengers will be equally comfortable. This is definitely a four seat car as the central armrest can't be moved. It has some dual cup holders for the rear seat passengers. You also get controls for heated seats and there's this lovely cubby here for putting stuff in. You get separate vents for the two passengers and inside here is, you don't get USB but you do at least get a regular car port so if you did want to use an adapter you could charge your phone too. It's quite a tall car so you get plenty of headroom and decent amount of knee room. Bear in mind that this, uh, this seat is actually quite far back because when there's no occupant in it, it automatically goes back to make it easier for the driver to get in. The boot doesn't appear to have its own button which means you have to get the key out to open it. It's a little bit surprising. The boot is quite small. It looks like it has a cubby here, but that actually doesn't do anything other than hold some tools. You can't put the rear seats forward because there's a hydrogen tank and a battery in the way. The total boot capacity is a mere 361 litres of luggage area, less than a Volkswagen Golf or Ford Mondeo. However, it is wider than you might think. You can, this goes all the way back here. So the big thing that really appeals to a lot of people about hydrogen cars is that you can refuel them in exactly the same fashion as petrol. You just basically put a nozzle over the top of here and pump hydrogen at 700 bar 
through here. The pump has, we, we went through the motions of this, the pump itself has, um, on the nozzle, it has infrared sensors and they, go, they work with an infrared uh, thing here. So they, the two talk to each other in a very intelligent fashion. The Mirai takes five kilograms of hydrogen, which Toyota claims will give the car up to 300 miles of range. However, if you don't drive like a grandmother, we reckon the true range is more like 250 to 260 miles. That's still pretty decent by EV standards. However, it's worth pointing out at this juncture that hydrogen is not cheap. It's 12 quid a kilogram, so it costs 60 quid to fill this car up. And that equates to about, if you use the 300 mile range um, that Toyota quotes, 20p per mile, which is quite expensive by EV standards when a lot of EVs will do between three and four p a mile. The big problem with fuel cell cars right now, however, isn't this cost. No, the big problem here is that there are only 10 refueling spots in the whole of UK for a car like this. Most of those are around London. There are a couple in Swindon, there's one in Sheffield, and there's one up in Scotland. So that doesn't give you a lot of options if you are getting close to running out of fuel. Putting that in perspective, there are over 20,000 battery electric charging points in the UK, and that's a fraction of what we need. So if you thought you had range anxiety in a battery electric vehicle, then you should try a hydrogen fuel cell car. And you can't even stop with a granny charger and plug it into the nearest 13 amp plug to get a quick boost either. So apart from the novel drivetrain, this is still an essentially an electric vehicle. You put your foot on the brake pedal, you press the start stop button, and you can see the seat rather gallantly moves you forward. And then you've got a, a regular foot brake here, which you have to release to get things moving. And finally, you've got the um, a, a kind of gear stick like thing. So you pull, pull this back for drive, you push it forward for reverse, neutrals that way. And there's this other mode called BR, which is used for re extra regenerative braking, kind of uh, give you the, the same sort of feeling as um, engine braking when you're going down a hill, but it's, you don't use that like an e-pedal on a Nissan, it's not that kind of um, regenerative braking. You get some push buttons for eco mode and power mode, which are the two driving modes available. You get a steering wheel full of buttons, but you do at least get separate controls for the lights and um, the windscreen wipers. And down here is the control for the adaptive cruise control. And you also get discrete controls for the air conditioning. The whole kind of overall control is a weird blend of regular buttons and these are kind of touch sensitive buttons, but it works. And as you can see, you've got heated left and right seats and heated steering wheel as well. Basically, you just get into the Mirai and drive it like any other EV. We're not gonna to spend too long on the media system of the Mirai because it's clearly 2015 technology and the sat-nav is not that great, though it does have live traffic. Much more interesting are the displays you get up here at the top of the dash. It is a little strange not to have this right behind the steering wheel, but if Tesla can put the main information in the center, so can Toyota. So scrolling through the options here, first thing you've got is a power meter, which shows you whether the car is producing power when it's accelerating or receiving it when it's regeneratively braking. And then you have other things like, you know, the typical kind of energy flow type screen, which is rather fun. Um, then you have an indicator that shows you um, which kind of level of uh, performance you're getting at the moment in your score. Um, this is their fuel consumption record. We haven't driven it for a few minutes, so that's not showing anything right now. Um, this one is a kind of overall trip meter but perhaps this is the most interesting because it tells you on different days of the week how well you've, uh, how far you've traveled and um, how much fuel you've actually used per 100 kilometers for that journey. So driving the Mirai is just like pretty much any other EV. In eco mode, it's pretty gutless, very slow, but um, comfortable to drive about in. But if you switch it into power mode, it's a lot more perky. Even in performance mode, this car takes 9.5 seconds to hit 60 miles an hour, which is pretty sluggish when you consider for the same money, the performance Tesla Model 3 will do it in three times less. That's three times less. So for an electric vehicle, it's not too bad for a kind of average saloon of this size, but for an electric car, it's disappointing. We really hope that Toyota improves upon this with the next version of the Mirai. The electric motor does have 154 HP, which seems quite decent. However, this car does weigh 1,850 kilos, so that's probably why it's not that fast. The mild regenerative braking puts energy back into the battery pack for reuse when you're accelerating. If you listen to the noise this car makes when you accelerate hard, 
it's not that pleasant. That's because you've got a bunch of different noises coming in there. So there's the electric motor and there's also a, uh, a pump which is pushing hydrogen across the fuel cell and combining it with the oxygen that's being pulled in from the front of the car. So you have all these, these sounds grouping together. It doesn't sound healthy, but it's not a problem. The handling of this car is a little bit more engaging than the Hyundai Nexo fuel cell vehicle, which we drove at the SMMT Drive Zero event a few weeks ago, but it's um, not fantastic. It is, after all, a big, heavy car aimed at passenger comfort more than performance driving. The fact that this car is well balanced does mean that cornering is quite reassuring, but the height is a little higher up than an electric vehicle that has all the weight in the batteries underneath the floor pan, so it doesn't have quite such an assurance when you go around a corner. Having driven this car extensively at motorway speeds, we have to say it's a lot more assured than the average small electric vehicle hatchback like a Renault Zoe Leaf. In fact, anything other than a Tesla doesn't feel quite as happy at motorway speeds. This car has a top speed of 120 miles an hour, so you could even tackle a German autobahn without embarrassment. But certainly at the 70 miles per hour of a British motorway, it's absolutely spot on, really comfortable, and just feels right at that kind of speed. The size is a bit more of an issue when you're navigating metropolitan traffic. However, like any EV, it's just as frugal, in fact, more so in traffic than it is on a motorway. At this point, we return to the elephant in the room, which is refueling. There are just so few places in the UK where you can top up the tank. There is, of course, also the issue about where your hydrogen comes from. Apparently, all but one of the refueling stops in the UK use electrolysis, um, and only one uses um, the conversion of fossil fuels. Now, if you use the conversion of fossil fuels, you're actually producing loads of um, pollution just in the process of creating your hydrogen. Although this car is five years old, you still get the usual safety features like lane keep assist, blind spot detection, and speed limit detection. Pre-crash sensing is built in, but it doesn't appear to include automatic braking. As we've already mentioned, this car is expensive at over £60,000. For that kind of money, you can get a Tesla Model 3 or Jaguar I-Pace, or indeed an e-tron or a Mercedes EQC. You get a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty, which is decent, but we're not sure what insurance group this is in. Uh, it's likely to be high, though, considering how expensive this car is. However, it's not really fair to compare this to a mass-market EV because it's still more of a kind of technological experiment than a, um, a mass-market electric vehicle. At the moment, there are actually fewer than 200 Mirais in the UK, 640 across Europe, and a mere 11,000, less than 11,000 across the whole world. There is a new version of the Mirai due in 2021, which will allegedly have 30% more range, it will have rear wheel drive, and for this car, Toyota is hoping to aim the Mirai more at the Tesla Model S and make it just as desirable. We really hope they do. The one thing we weren't sure about is why Toyota didn't make this a Lexus, given the, the premium equipment level and the luxury of this car, even in this version. So a lot of our readers on social media keep going on about hydrogen. What about hydrogen? Why, why are you talking about hydrogen? However, with only 10 refueling spots in the UK so far, this has to be a non-starter at this stage. Given that it's taken around 10 years, just to get to the 20,000 electric charge points we have for battery electric vehicles, it seems unlikely that hydrogen is gonna get any closer in that kind of time frame as well. So if you're thinking a hydrogen car purchase, you're probably gonna be thinking about 2030 and beyond. Fuel cell electric vehicles are clearly not a viable option for most consumers. If you're a fleet buyer and you happen to have an operation that's near one of the refueling spots, yes, you might be able to make use of it, there's a company called Green Tomato Cars that is running a bunch of these Mirais as taxis and they're very happy with them. But for the rest of us, I just can't see fuel cells winning out against battery electric vehicles in the UK. In Germany maybe, where there are more refueling stops already and the EU's putting money into it, yeah, maybe. But I think batteries have really won out in this country already. Right, I'm off to get a drink of water and not from down here.